G'day IT professionals. My name is Oren Thomas and I'm a Principal Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. Welcome to this Windows Server Basics video. In these videos, I will go over basic concepts related to the administration of Windows Server. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of group policy. Specifically, we will cover what is group policy? What is a group policy object? How is group policy processed? organizational unit structure, and the basics of creating and applying a GPO. Let's get started. The first question to address is what is group policy? Group policy is a technology that enables configuration and settings management of user and computer settings on computers running Windows Server and Windows Client operating systems. For example, you can use group policy to set password policies, desktop background settings, mapped drives, and almost any setting that is configurable for a Windows operating system or an application that runs on a Windows operating system. In addition to using group policy to define configurations for groups of users and client computers, you can also use group policy to help manage server computers by configuring many server-specific operational and security settings. Each group policy setting can have a multitude of options. Some are simply on or off, others might be a numeric value or variable, like a network address. Others might be choose one of the following options. One of the big challenges of group policy is that there are more than a thousand group policy items. They aren't well documented, and there isn't a search engine built into the default group policy tools. Group policy works best as a configuration management technology in on-premises networks, where domain joined computers have high bandwidth line of sight connections to domain controllers. Group policy can represent policy settings locally or in Active Directory domain services. Local group policy can be used to lock down the configuration of standalone computers, controlling the configuration of the standard user environment without requiring communication with configuration servers on the network or in the cloud. When used with Active Directory, group policy settings are contained in group policy objects, which most IT professionals just call GPOs. In this talk, we're mostly interested in Active Directory, so we'll put aside local group policy to cover at some point in the future. A GPO is a virtual collection of policy settings, security permissions, and scope of management that you can apply to users and computers in Active Directory. In some environments, multiple GPOs might apply, with any conflicts resolved through a set of known processing rules. Policy settings in a GPO are divided into policy settings that affect a computer and policy settings that affect a user. Computer-related policies specify system behavior, application settings, security settings, assigned applications, and computer startup and shutdown scripts. User-related policies specify system behavior, application settings, security settings, assigned and published applications, user log on and log off scripts, and folder redirection. Generally speaking, computer settings override user-related settings. For computers, group policy is applied when the computer starts. For users, group policy is applied at sign-in. This initial processing of policy can also be referred to as a foreground policy application. The foreground application of group policy can be synchronous or asynchronous. In synchronous mode, the computer doesn't complete the system startup process until computer policy is applied successfully. The user logon process doesn't complete until user policy is applied successfully. Organizations have got better with optimizing this, but 20 years ago, when people were a bit more lackadaisical with their configuration of policies, it could take a few extra minutes for people to get to their desktops because group policy processing was moving slower than a queue of snails at a time-wasting festival. In asynchronous mode, if there are no policy changes that require synchronous processing, 
the computer can complete the start sequence before the application of computer policy is complete. The desktop environment can be available to the user before the application of user policy is complete. The system then periodically refreshes and applies group policy in the background. During a refresh, policy settings are applied asynchronously and the computer continues to function as normal. By default, group policy refresh occurs every 90 minutes. The system might add a random time of up to 30 minutes to the refresh interval. You can change these default values by using a group policy setting in the administrative templates extension to group policy. Setting the value to zero minutes causes the refresh rate to be set to seven seconds. Not all group policy extensions are processed during a background refresh. For example, folder redirection processing occurs only when a user logs on. Also, the processing of software installation policy occurs only when a computer starts and when a user logs on. You can also perform a refresh using the GP update command or invoke GP update PowerShell commandlet even though the system processes the script extensions for group policy during a background refresh, individual scripts run only when the computer starts and shuts down, and when a user logs on and logs off. During a policy refresh, by default, a client-side extension reapplies policy settings only if it detects a change to one of its GPOs or to its list of GPOs. Active Directory objects such as user and computer accounts are organized into special hierarchical buckets called organizational units. Whilst you can apply group policy objects at the domain and the site level, an OU is the lowest level Active Directory container to which you can assign group policy settings. Doing this allows you to assign a GPO directly to a collection of users and computers. You can have an OU that is nested inside another OU, and policies that apply to one container also apply to the subcontainers. There are some other complicated blocking and override topics that you need to be aware of, but these are a bit complicated to cover in this particular video. Also important to remember is that you can't apply GPOs to default containers, such as the user's container or computer's container, that's another reason why you want to move actual user and computer accounts out of these default containers into OUs that you have created. Typically, you assign most GPOs at the OU level. A single GPO can be assigned to multiple OUs. Make sure that your OU structure supports your group policy administration and management strategy. You can also apply some group policy settings at the domain level. In fact, there are some policies, such as password policies, that can only be set in the default domain policy and are ignored if you configure them at another level. Another hint is that whilst it is possible to apply policies at the site level, which you might use to apply a specific policy to all computers or users at a specific network location, it's uncommon to see this used in practice. Microsoft developed group policy architecture more than 25 years ago. Some of the ideas have stood the test of time. Other ideas were so good that they only ever turn up as options in exam questions and recruitment interviews. OU design requires balancing requirements for delegating administrative rights independent of group policy needs, and the need to scope the application of group policy. You can create OUs within a domain and delegate administrative control for specific OUs to particular users or groups. By using a structure in which OUs contain homogeneous objects, such as either user or computer objects, but not both, you can easily disable those sections of a GPO that don't apply to a particular type of object. This approach to OU design reduces complexity and improves the speed at which group policy is applied. GPOs linked to the higher layers of the OU structure are inherited by default for OUs at the lower layer, reducing the need to duplicate GPOs or to link a GPO to multiple containers.
How complicated your OU structure is will depend on how many users and computers there are in your organization. There are no hard and fast rules, but if you have 50 OUs and only 500 user accounts, someone had too much coffee. In this demo, we are going to create a GPO and link it to an organizational unit. We will also edit some policies within the OU. We start in the Group Policy Management Console. We expand and select the Production Devices OU. Creating and applying a policy here will allow us to have all accounts in the Accounting Computers, Retail Computers and Secretariat Computers inherit the policy settings. We right-click on the Production Devices OU and then choose Create a GPO in this domain and link it here. On the new GPO dialog box, we provide a name for the GPO. In this case, we are just calling it Audit Logon. We choose OK. We double click on the GPO to see the current links and settings. We then right click on the policy and select Edit. In this instance, we are just going to configure some policies that ensure that logon events are written to the event log. There are some videos on this channel explaining all of the auditing policies if that's the sort of thing that sets your excitement level to over 9,000. Once the policy settings are configured and the Group Policy Management Editor is closed, any computers that fall within the scope of the policy will have those auditing settings applied. In this video, you learned some of the basics around Group Policy. We discussed not only what group policies are, but what a GPO is and how you should think about applying GPOs to organizational units. We've just covered the starter basics in this talk. We'll be publishing more Windows Server Basics videos on this channel soon, including examining topics such as applying group policy and managing GPOs in the near future. If you've got a specific topic you want to see covered, leave it in the comments below.